on this episode brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com. Shit, there's some like, there is some heat getting money, getting motivated. Yeah, the, we went everywhere all over from the place. updates, stocks, motivation, yeah. squatting 700, you know. Yeah, yeah. The whole thing. I think just like, like round table and about like finance, aspirations, what's happening, what we've been doing, things we've been executing on. Like it's just like, it's really just capturing a little bit of everyone's life right now. Yeah. Trey? I mean, I think it's cool too because like this is just an everyday conversation Correct. that we would have in the first place except there's just a mic recording it. So. That's a fucking great take. Yeah. Cool. Also, all the all the stock shit, it's not financial advice. Yeah, of course. So yeah. It's not financial advice. Yeah, of course. Right? Just sweet that. shit. Yeah, like like we said it. Like this is a heater episode and we're just talking about getting money. Yeah, Cole's out so. the trap house. Yeah. Let's go to the out show. Out the trap house. <laughs> Kyle's in. <laughs> yeah, Kyle's in. <laughs> well, okay. well, 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 if, if you like listen to the last we roll one. Tra- or, uh, Kyle? All right. Three, <laughs> two. <laughs> Sorry, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Roundtable podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G at Small Arms. Danny at Trey Speed in the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. What's good, fellas? Chilling. What's up? I think we should talk about exciting things today. Yeah. yeah. You know what like I mean? What? There's a lot of exciting. Th- I mean, Discord. Oh, yeah. I mean, Big NFTs. That's fucking exciting. Yeah, huge. Danny's awesome. building a fucking crib. That's pretty fucking exciting. Yeah, pretty cool, yeah. I'm getting ready for a bodybuilding show and a powerlifting meet. That's pretty fucking exciting. Yeah. I mean, you know. I'm about to move all the trap on. house. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're going to move Kyle in. Yeah. Kyle's out. moving to the trap house. <laughs> Legit trap house. Yeah. Um, you got your coat on today. You day. okay? Yeah. Do you okay? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just like a little under the weather. You are. Yeah. I saw him put his hoodie I got, on this morning. And I, was, I got I was a little like bug going on. Yeah. A little sniffly. Yeah. A little <laughs> sniffle, sniffle. Dude, I, yeah, I just got hit by something yesterday. <laughs> yeah, but you're getting hit by the fucking bricks, though, too. That's facts. I Yeah, yeah there's something going on inside my, bo- inside my body. The CDC might come and, like, take me <laughs> to test me because there's some weird <laughs> shit going Jesus. on right now. <laughs> Dude, I love your TikTok lunge videos. Yeah, I think the, I think the people are really starting to lock on. I love I, I love being on. the ultimate heel on TikTok. No, you're 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 a villain. I am a villain. Yeah, but I'm like the it. people's villain. You were arguing I'm like, with dudes on my TikTok. <laughs> yes, like I'm like the people's villain because everyone on TikTok loves just to chat. Yeah, and I'm just going in after them. Yeah, yeah. Like, so you're basically made straight. for it. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, I feel it's like I'm shit. like the Batman of TikTok. Like I'm the vigilante of TikTok. Dude, I'm the people's heel. My my spot is definitely the crazy power of things. Shit, people have no clue what they're watching. They're so confused by the bands, by the gear, by the suit, by the yeah. fucking all of it. Like they're just so fucking confused. It's actually amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Cole is arguing with people, calling, saying I was half. I need to like. It. I need to like take it more serious. Yeah. I need to put some more time into it. It's it's fucking. It's got some legs though. Yeah, I, I think so. Mine's starting to grow, so I'm excited about it. It's good. Uh, talk about the Discord and, and just the NFT project. Like, give everybody kind of a wrap up on what's going um, on with that, fellas. So, like, yeah, just I mean, by the time people listen to this, yeah. So, like, the disc we just launched the Discord for mm-hmm. like the Varsity Club NFT project. So, like, Discord for people that don't know, it's basically like essentially like a chat room. Like, basically, yeah. it's so like crazy chat- how it's yeah. turned back to that. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just really like wild. A, it's like yeah. a fucking huge like AOL chat. Yes, room, yes, yes, where, like, that's exactly. Yeah. A whole bunch of people can join, talk. There's like different chat rooms, all the different topics. It's like a message project. board, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's just like a really cool way to just connect with the community on a, on you know I mean, like another level mm-hmm. yeah. and you guys will be in that like heavy right like it's on your phone you'll get the notifications yep. yeah like it'll yeah be. and so like usually most projects that's where they put all the announcements yeah. what's going on Got like it. if they're doing some sort of event or twitter space like they'll post that as their announcements there. instead of like Got it. like they'll still tweet it out but that's like the main but it's it, going yeah. directly to everybody that cares yes directly, yes though. it's yeah. the main information hub so if you want to learn about some like another project you would go in their discord and you can find everything you need to know so. And Discord to have an app where you guys yeah, can there's like a phone app. Yeah. You can do it on yeah. desktop as well. That, yeah. yeah, so if anybody's interested in learning more about the project, like obviously the yeah. Twitter at Varsity Club mm-hmm. NFT, but like the Discord though, I think is like real the real, where the real sauce is at though for people mm-hmm. that like actually like want to dive into the yeah. weeds. Well, and by the time this comes out, it, you guys have been going for a few weeks, so yeah. I think that yeah. is perfect time for people like for fuck. Sure. I want to get in the Discord. Yeah, because there's been a lot of people who mm-hmm. now uh, who have been listening to the varsity creative audio mm-hmm. network where we just talk about nfts the project and everything like that because everyone everyone's hearing the news about nfts sure. everyone's everyone's hearing the buzz about it no one knows go to but we got you yeah well and they you trust know. you guys yeah exactly that that's the thing like it, which in this space is uncommon because you you don't know who the fuck half these people yeah. are yeah yeah so, yeah it's fucking sick you know. 
Danny, you uh, a couple weeks ago figured out that your house was a lot further along than you thought it was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. You, you did a drywall walkthrough yesterday. Pre drywall. Oh, Pre wow. drywall <laughs> walkthrough. Subtle. What? How did that go? <laughs> Subtle. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, you can still see through the entire house, so that's yeah. interesting. But, uh, yeah, it actually was pretty eye-opening. It was really clean, like a lot more cleaner than I thought. It, oh, like, like a the job site? Yeah, a job site, yeah. So I guess we just have a – according to my realtor, it, we have a really solid, like, construction manager, mm-hmm. not cutting corners and that sort of thing. So they did a really good job of kind of explaining and dumbing down things for me. Mm-hmm. So walking from room to room, like he was even, like, marking out, like – um, like where like the ceiling fan, like what this wire was for, like yeah. shit like that was, re- was really cool. Um, but yeah, like we're literally doing, we did the pre drywall walkthrough yesterday and signed off on that. And then today they're starting insulation and then next week they're start literally starting to put drywall up. So it's going to like Damn. literally start to like really feel like a house. Yeah. Um, what a cool process. Yeah. Huh? It's, it's so cool. So uh, they told us like, cause we're selling our, our place. Mm-hmm. So kind of to figure out the timeline more accurately now. So it's going to be, he even said it could even be end of June now. Oh, so wow. oh, end damn. of June. Bro, weren't you supposed July. to be in September? Yeah. They, they That's I was fucking yeah, crazy, close. especially with all the building materials right now. Yeah. My realtor, he, you, he, he has some other ones going on with some different builders and he's like, there was one he said he's like the worst one we have right now is they signed the contract <laughs> and they, it won't be done for two years, two years. I was like, fuck. what the fuck? But he did say that like ours is like one of the smoothest he's ever like seen during this particular fuck time. Yeah. So I think we honestly have gotten well. Lucky. And the faster that thing's up, the more it's gonna be worth, bro. That Your equity yeah. is going. <clears throat> that's why what we it's keep being built. Yeah. So like, especially with all the developments and I mean, you have literally you have Amazon, Google. Meta, Intel, like Intel, literally all that's like five to ten minutes away from yours. Me. I mean, I would say legitimately, yours will be up what thirty grand probably the day you move in. Pretty much, yeah. That's fucking wet. That's so, the, so I, I actually texted our. Uh, that's fucking. That's real fucking equity, Danny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's getting rich, motherfucker. I well, like so it. I was talking to, to his name's Ben, our realtor, and um, he's like, just text uh, um, the MI rep that you started with her name is Morgan. And so I texted her and I was like, what is the, what would the price be to buy this same exact house at a base, like just the base price. Mm-hmm. And she said it was like basically 30 to 40 K higher already. I was like, Damn. what? Yeah, and that's how, fuck? that's, I mean, and that was is, before adding anything. Yeah. This is an aggressive market, but that's in theory, like the American dream, like people get in buy a house and it goes up in equity. And then when they sell it, they can, uh, it's like fucking monopoly. Right. Then you yeah. go to a bigger house. Like, because usually you have to wait five years before oh, you yeah. start getting any equity out of it. So well, like my, walking uh, in day one. Dude, my Airbnb went up 150 in two years. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's wild. Extreme example here. Yeah. yeah. And I'd like to say I was really good at real estate. I just got fucking lucky. Same. Yeah. So I, I talked to Dave Braden, who owned this building before me. Shout out Dave. What's good? <laughs> He's like a fucking really legit real estate dude. He owns like 30 acres across the street. He owns that lot beside us. He had this build. He owns a bunch of gang of shit. He's a potassium dude too. He's like owning any assets right now is the win because like cash basically i don't i understand inflation but not at like a high level but like cash is obviously decreasing in value but like for instance when i resold my tahoe back i got out of it after i drove it twenty three thousand miles the same i paid for it because i just had it the house went up just because i owned it so it was like almost like one of these times in history just because you possess something Mm -hmm. or have something going on you're going to win from it. And yeah. now with Intel coming to fucking basically Licking County or whatever, that's like a whole nother dude. They're already hitting me up trying to get more taxes out of this building because they know what's coming. Yeah. So I've got a fucking complaint against me. I got in the mail. Now I get to fucking get Ryan to help me out with it, which I need to call Ryan anyway. But it's like the, uh, yeah, the shit's about to change like on mm-hmm. the real estate market, Eastside Columbus in general. Apparently, like the headlines too. That was just like phase one of the Intel yeah. thing. There's, there's something else that is like even big, like bigger, like they're a phase buying, two of them that uh, that yes. hasn't gotten approval yet. Yeah, dude, they're about to take over. Like the Johnstown mm-hmm. real estate market is literally exploding right now. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be very interesting. Yeah, well, yeah. So I'm just glad that I fucking own a couple things and I'm just hanging out. Uh, yeah, you just gotta like, drive a wet ride for free. I'm just kicking. <laughs> I'm just kicking it. Just trying to own some shit. <laughs> but it also proves that, like, I knew when the opportunity for this building came up, it wasn't the best time. Actually, it was the most terrible time. 
But I knew if I, and think about this. Think if I try to come do it right now. Wouldn't fuck. Just One, right. this dude wouldn't sell it to me because yeah. he's too smart. You know what I mean? At the time he was making so, I overpaid him, blah, blah, blah. But that don't, it looks great right now. But still, like, and he made he made good money. But he knows, like, the the game is what happens over the next five. Yeah, we ain't going nowhere, bro. Yeah, what happens over the next ten? Mm-hmm. And I got the biggest building on this block. Come on, man. Buy and hold. It's a big fucking piggy bank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we just put muscles in it. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? So <laughs> what was that? That's <laughs> <laughs> in the piggy bank. Oh, yeah. Flex and put it in the oh, piggy oh, bank. Oh, Get that, Danny. Jesus. <laughs> So anyway, it's like, uh, it's interesting time for where we live, Mm -hmm. literally where we live. You're you're going to sell that condo and like fucking, yeah. So actually I'd put a fucking stupid number on it, bro. Well, actually right now. So it's interesting because I just like walked outside like two weeks ago and I look over to the right two doors down. There's a for sale sign in the fucking window. And I like walked up and there's nothing in it. So it's not even being lived in right now. Yeah. So it got listed and I was, you know, watching it and Ben was watching it and He's like, yeah, right when it went hit the market, there was like multiple offers. He doesn't know what those offers were, mm-hmm. but like it's already it's it's already in contract immediately. So but you'll so find that out real soon once yeah, it closes. We're just waiting to see what it is. Because yeah. we're strate- like he's a lot more strategic as far as listing it than I thought mm-hmm. we were gonna be. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. like if there's like a similar condo that lists that week, then we're probably not gonna list that week. We'll yeah, probably yeah. wait to the next week. So you're not competing with somebody. Yeah. Um, but obviously we want that one to sell for as much as possible so the comps look look better. So Fuck yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean the and Your the location's a good spot too. Yeah. Oh. Well I was gonna say the location <laughs> with that and like there's um I was talking to uh Linda's mom because she's like shout out Linda's mom. Shout out uh Emily. <laughs> um <laughs> But she's talking about like, the new like technology district and some of the stuff um, on Kinnear Road yep. down at Ohio State. Dude, there's so much shit in the works. Dude, they're yeah, they're building so, so much. Like stuff. so, so and much it's, shit that's like two seconds away from me too. So it's like, Bro. should be interesting. Yeah, Ohio State just keeps potentially bigger, bigger. potentially interesting. <laughs> it's very good. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> uh, Cole, you knew, I know you took advantage of like Shopify and some of the other tech stocks that were down, right? Yeah, yeah. How you feeling about that? We all did. Yeah. First, <laughs> good, first, good. first <laughs> while we're on the topic of real estate, I'm in the <laughs> opposite situation where I my strategic plan is <laughs> to wait and see what the fuck happens. Yeah, Cole's, yeah. I'm in no Cole's moving in with mommy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out, <laughs> shout out big, Michaela. Big steps, big steps. Moving out of the trap house. Yeah, yeah. You know? Shout so out to that you're calling it a yeah. fucking trap house. Yeah, so, so good. For, yeah, anyone who doesn't know, I literally <laughs> yeah, live. So, good. so 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 Danny's been in the trap house. I have been. I have too. I've taken multiple showers in the trap house. I got I got a cat got got the casting couch in there, got the black leather couch. Um, Are you taking that with you? Well, so here's is the thing. All right, so hold on. So here's this the thing. Is amazing. So we'll we'll evolve. So <laughs> yeah, my take, hey, take us on a trip. Call. So <laughs> I was <laughs> actually <laughs> three. So <laughs> I, I I knew that it was time to get out of there. Like I was done with it. I want more space. Whatever. But so because we talked about potentially building a house, yeah. like me getting in contract to get a house in Johnstown. But again, also. I'm not even 25 yet. It's like a little early. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what the fuck my life's going to be like. I don't. I'm not going to try to do anything. You know, yeah. consulted, whatever. I evaluated the situation. Said, nope, it's not for me. Because me and Trey, we might be living. I in was like, just going to say, we like, might be living in like in our own island. There could so, be a lot of change. Very I don't know. Soon. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> holding off's a good call. Yeah. So <laughs> so moving into this apartment, I am taking the couch because. <laughs> Has a lot of history. Please because, put that in your yes, studio. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Because Casting we're moving as as the lease begins, <laughs> we'll be getting back from Disney. So I'll be yoked out for Disney. Yes. <laughs> Immediately as I get back. Can you wear a white beater one day at Disney and just snap yeah, photos? Yeah. So I've thought about this. I have to wear. I've thought I, about this. Yeah, I, I I'm a, I'm a I'm a I'm like I'm like the black beater guy. I don't think I'm oh, a white guy. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Black Can you get a Star represent. Wars a Star Wars tank when you're down there? A what? Star Wars tank. You need to get like the pin, like you know, how you can get the pins at Disney. Oh yeah, and just like wear them all. Black, <laughs> black yeah. beater, hey, a black beater He's with like some pins, bro, with some like <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mickey Mouse pins. And then, pins and then on I just need, I just need like more like chains. Yeah, yeah, I, I got know. a couple. I picture with the ears too. <laughs> yeah. With the ears, I'm not yeah, getting yeah. the ears. Michaela actually the bought. Yeah, I'm not getting the ears. <laughs> not getting Mickey Mouse. I think ears. we need some. Can just, you wear I think for one picture? I might get. I might. I might build your own saber and carry it around and act like I'm fighting people. We need my favorite. Well, one of my favorite things about Disney is the fireworks at night. They do so fire. Sick. Yeah, they do fireworks on the castle, yeah. bro. Yeah, Magic so I'm Kingdom. unbelievable. Dude, going to Disney, I'm super fucking pumped. You should about. be. We need some Disney yeah. gear. 
I'll pay you for sure. Like I I told Michaela because she's like been there. She's been there before. and She knows what's cool. I'm like, I just want to see the Star Wars shit because I know how awesome it's going to be. Yeah, Yeah. that's exciting. Because Joe, because Joe Johnson, shout out Joe. Mm, He he goes like every year and he said the Star Wars shit is actually amazing. Mm. Talking to him actually gave me the idea to make that happen. Joe actually just, uh, Edward Jones just approved that they're allowed to do podcasts now too. Oh, so we can shit. legitimately have Joe on like whenever we want now, which is That's cool. Amazing. He was like, "No, I don't know if you still want to have me on." And I'm just <coughs> oh, letting you know we want Joe. I'm available. Yeah. I was yeah. like, "Hell yeah, Joe!" I'm like, "I think we can't teach that stuff enough. No. There's going to be always people coming He's in, got learning. Some knowledge yeah. to share. and everyone's yeah. situation is so different." Yeah, yeah, and I think Joe works with all ranges too, so I think it's like the perfect. There's a lot to yeah. extract there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so. yeah, mm-hmm. as we get back from Disney, the lease begins. We are allowed to officially move in. I don't have any furniture whatsoever. I was going to say, the moving ain't going to be that bad. Yeah, I don't. I got have no stuff. furniture. Does so I, No, she doesn't have okay, like that. Okay, so you guys are square one. So we're basically yeah. taking what we have now and making it like work. But then the week we like can move in, is that weekend is the same weekend as the meet and bodybuilding Fuck show. yeah. Mm. I mean, that makes sense. So, yeah, so it's a long game. Of, yeah, of I like it. Game. <laughs> long game. <laughs> yeah, casting yeah. couch only. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> You'd be like, got this new crib with this casting couch. Yeah. 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 But I'm only casting one person now. Yeah, <laughs> jeez, go so, go Urban so Dictionary that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Urban yeah, we then, got that going on. And then little. talk about yeah, you grabbed some tech stocks too, right? You grabbed Shopify when it was Shopify, down. Shopify, Amazon. Did you grab Facebook when it was down too? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So I I so you know talking with Wall Squad Joe, we yeah. were reevaluating my long term positions that I have with Joe, I like right? Because yep. I have my own personal account that I just like you know trade with. Yeah, I have the crypto, I have the NFTs. My long term stuff with Joe, we uh, reevaluated, we moved some things. So I got, I saw, so I, I took down my contribution to some dividend stocks to mm-hmm. get into Facebook Absolutely. and Microsoft because they're making huge metaverse plays. Yep. And they were getting beat up. So I'm like, well, they ain't fucking Perfect going anywhere. Perfect time. Yeah, they ain't going anywhere. Mm-hmm. So I'm getting into those. Mm-hmm. Then Shopify, which we fucking love Absolutely use Shopify love. Max. It's literally like the number one. It's not going anywhere. No, it drops like sixty. <laughs> it's like it's like in its own category, just like Amazon is in my it, opinion. One hundred percent, same it's as one hundred percent. Commerce king. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they announced that they're doing some big like re- like investments um, for some like warehousing. So they yeah. had no. They're going like, to drop. They had like stuff. no capital basically. Yeah. Everyone the, works the remote. That work. Yeah, yeah. They didn't have to hold any inventory. Everyone works remote. Whatever. But so then they're getting fucking smashed. They were like seventeen hundred. Now they dropped down like six something. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, yep, like, buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, no, I, I love that long term play. This that was the yeah. first time I got excited to buy Facebook, aka Meta, because of the same thing. Like yeah. people just don't even understand I, how deep they are in that. I knew that I needed to add those into my long term <clears throat> positions. Yep. But the timing, the timing was not. Yeah, timing wasn't right. Dude, Facebook used to be four hundred bucks. Yeah. Three ninety eight, and it, I bought it at two hundred three. Shopify was seventeen hundred. I got it at six forty. Mm-hmm. Um, six thirty nine, six forty. Amazon just announced a split at twenty for one. It was fucking the height of its thirty seven hundred. Fuck, it was down twenty. It was twenty eight hundred, like a m- less than a month ago. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what was it? Yeah, that was the three major ones, right? Everyone jumped in, most of us. So yeah, and then you know, sick. I got some like you know crypto holdings, but mm-hmm. I've, I've been getting in and out of that just because of the market it's so volatile. But then I got some like long term NFT holds. Hell That's yeah. That's about it. Because I'm not really like trying to snipe any NFTs right now or trading. No, you're about to make your own, bro. Yeah, because we're building our own. Yeah. You know? So fuck yeah, I fuck with it. Trayvon, you're back in AMC or AMC's kind of chirping up a little bit again, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. most I of them, like, about that. All of them, like literally all of my investments right now are all like green. No, they're all like aggre- like all aggressive okay. flipping, like the call options. Like that's I all. Got like, it. That's like all I'm on right now. So you've now. been in and out of stuff. In and out, like fucking love it. Yeah, on a daily basis. That's yeah. all I've been. That's like investment wise, what I've been doing. I'm just like super fucking aggressive right now because yeah. I'm so Why young. Not? I'm yeah, so young. Bro, of course. So like, I just feel like. <clears throat> I like. I feel like I can like honestly like afford to lose the money. Like if I, you know what I mean. Well, yeah, you're gonna make it next month and the month after, and yeah. you got so many things going on. It makes sense. Yeah. The, uh, and it's just like learning too, because and then like I feel like if I gradually just continue like you know what I mean? if I'm like doing options like now mm-hmm. for like a while, then like in fucking five years or some shit, who knows? You're gonna like, be a G at it. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Bro. Like maybe yeah. It's, yeah. then then like oh like maybe I just get on fucking trade yeah. for like literally half an hour and then that's the and then you're day. like I'm good, shut it down. <laughs> yeah, oh wait, my NFT. Oh wait, I just got. Oh yeah, I'm good. Oh yeah, I got the NFT. <laughs> I just took up golf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's that's fucking sweet, man. You know, I'm really happy about all the shit I bought in the pandemic that I was a believer in, like some of the 
oil stuff and shit that was like getting hammered is all up crazy yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. So like, obviously I'm not happy that gas prices are what it is because it affects a lot of people, but actually like the stock, even if it just would settle in like a, a good, we don't need oil at $150 a barrel, but if that shit's like 70 or 80 or even up to close to a hundred, like it, it could be then reasonable if we don't have like the conflict going on. So to me, I was like the, some of the, the dividend stocks I really believed in uh, really, have, it was really time at time in, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's okay. -y. My dividends were rebuying it at 26 bucks during the pandemic. Yeah, yes. It was $72. <laughs> like to think that my dividend was rebuying it on <laughs> basically autopilot and that it could, it's up like, two times the amount now That's the key right there boy it is the key exactly mm -hmm. so I, i've really been able to see like you know because the reality is what i'll be 44 i've been you know pretty into this stuff for like 10 years but like really heavy into it since 15 so to see stuff when i when the fucking market was falling and i stayed on my path i did not deviate mm -hmm. i said this is what i invest every month these are the things i i believe in and i'm really proud of myself that i stayed like in my lane because mm -hmm. now it's paying huge. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I locked in a dividend on OKE at 12%. It's fucking insane. If you go buy it today, that dividend's like 3%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's pretty wild. I have a but. fraction of what you have with that. <laughs> yeah, but it, but it yeah, all it's, fucking it's, relative. It's something. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Sure. It's still the fucking timing. Or just like, I know I talked to Jake Holland. He, when I sent out the thing about Amazon to the group, a lot of people don't know, like, in our 4 a.m. crew, like we're always talking about lifting and shit, but we're always talking about this stuff too because I want the guys from the group, like even if they can't take part in it, just like here at Max too, I want to make sure they're aware. If it's something I really feel passionate about, like when they said Amazon splitting fucking 20 to 1, mm -hmm. dude, Amazon's not fucking going anywhere. And But I know not everybody can afford a, a $2,800 stock. Stuff but stuff. being, yeah. But What's being, that, what'd you say? Still has to, Amazon that still has to As improve. improved. Yeah, it I think it's going approved, to yeah. though, but yeah. ho it hopefully. Show, it will though. But yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, I was like, look, I don't know if anybody can even take advantage of this, but if you can, yeah. there's no yeah. way this is like, if it's a 2,800 and you buy in, well, shit, it's already back to 3,300. Mm -hmm. I would think before it splits, it's going to be close to an all time high. I'm hoping, which is 3,700 and then run back and then it splits. <laughs> so now for you guys who don't know it, they said 20 to one, your one share turns into 20 shares of the equivalent value. So we'll say it goes to four grand. That'd be 20 shares at 200, right? Okay, well, what happens when in five years or probably less goes back to a thousand? You got now 20 shares worth a thousand where you had one share worth 2,800. Do the motherfucking math. <laughs> I was buying as many of them motherfuckers as I can. Or 10 years. Yeah, yeah, what? Even in 10 years. It might split again. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so it this is again. so if I look, uh, this is why for every niece and nephew, I bought them a share of Amazon and gave it to them as they graduate high school. And I just told them to forget about it because I was like, this motherfucker is going to split one day. And think about this for like my youngest ones. Like I have a, a niece that's 10 or 11 or Andin. like it's going to split now. It's going to run back by the time they graduate. Yeah. That thing it can will, literally pay for their college or at least one year. Yeah. Yeah. Literally just from fucking 1500 well, bucks or whatever. Um, I think one thing to point out too, at least from personal experience, I don't know if it's like a year two years ago, whatever, but like when the opportunity comes up to be able to take advantage of the opportunity. Yes. Because it's that big. that's something that really bothered me when yeah, there was, when there's things that, yeah, when there was things that, came, what that, you know, that came up, but I literally just didn't have the financial resources to actually like partake. Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, with the, with the crypto thing, with, with the Amazon thing, or like you can like have, you know, if you actually plan for it, you have the ability to shift things around. That's a great point. To yeah. actually Which, just, you know, take advantage of it right away. Which is why I lived in the trap house. Yeah. My, no, no, exactly. my, yeah. my overhead was so fucking low. Listen, all of you guys have done a great job, better than I did, living below your means at a younger yeah. age. A hundred percent. But like changing to be like intentional about it. Yeah. Like that's like. It's the, important well, because it's, it becomes from something you talk about to something that's important to you because you know you're missing stuff. Yeah. And you're like, you're willing to take less on the comforts of life because Man, when I could take advantage of that, like we just talked about, oh, well, shit, I could buy it. You know, Jay Collin could buy a share of Amazon. Fucking talk to me in six years and see how happy he is about that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. because he was it, probably the same type of thing. He's like watching his cash so he can take advantage. Of exactly. Stuff. Yep. It's huge, bro. Yep. I used to feel the same way when I started getting around some guys that operated like this. 
and I could I was the guy that couldn't take advantage of it, and it fucking pissed me off. Yeah, I was gonna say I, it just pissed me off. I was, so like, like, I was like, something's gotta fucking change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I don't know the uh, um, his name's Rami Seti, the guy who wrote "I Will Teach You Be Rich." Yep. You've probably seen him around, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. But he always talks about like, um, like cutting merciless, mercilessly with with like your expenses, but spending like what you're cons- what you're uh, considered like a rich life or whatever mm-hmm. like that. So like that could be like part of it, I guess, just yeah. like reallocating that way. Just really looking at in and out, man. And then what's what's really important? Is it important to have X or is it important to set yourself up? I'm telling you. I've been around older because I'm way older than you guys. Like I'm around people that, you know, are like 10 years older than me. Mm-hmm. And they're wondering like, shit, I didn't save enough money. Yeah. You know, not a good feeling. <laughs> oh, yeah, bro. That would be not the cool feeling. You know what I'm saying? So it's like there's there's people they are getting nervous because they live to 80. They ain't going to have enough. So you guys doing this shit early? You're gonna be way, you guys are going to be way ahead of me. And I'm going to be excited about because I'll be on your board. You guys will be paying me. <laughs> I'm going to be getting residual checks Fuck from the yeah. NFT. Like, just come by the house to smoke my new cigar. Tell me about it's, it. It's a fucking wet cigar. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. is. Oh, yeah, it's going to be nasty. Um, so, <laughs> all right. We'll talk about, uh, so, Cole, you're getting ready for the powerlifting meet yep. as you're cutting weight. How's yeah. that feeling? I feel good. Actually, like, it's weird. Every time I, I lose weight, my bench leverages feel better. And different. Whenever I was the, whenever I was close to my leanest, that's whenever I benched three fifty at eighty one. Oh yeah, you did. Like that's whenever it felt the best. That's right. But now I'm dropping down. Was you wide then or close? I was super. I was like extremely close. Like I okay. went back to high school football. Close yeah, yeah, and close. Fucking grip. had it. But now, but that was before I injured my shoulder. Mm-hmm. And what's weird is I always go close. I've now moved my grip out wide, and my shoulder pain's gone. So I don't know what's going on. So you're feeling better. Yeah, like yesterday, yeah. I felt awesome. It's probably because what day lunges are you on? Uh, day sixty nine plus twenty two. That's probably what you it is. Served it up, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah right. that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I went like, yes, and Danny went. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking yeah, sixty nine plus twenty two. Yeah, <laughs> the D A W G of TikTok. <laughs> so all right, so one, you won't know what you weigh till that day again, nope. which is kind of nope. epic. You've yeah. only had two weigh in days. I, yeah, I, I, I can definitely sense that my body's a little heavier from the weekend, like yeah. basically a little weekend rager, but yeah, that yeah. was like a celebratory weekend. No, it rager. Was. Yeah. And now like, you know, I'm feeling like fucking a little under the weather. So I don't think my body's like fucking. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. Let's talk about that. I feel good though. That was all your guys' first UFC. No, Danny, you've been to one UFC fight before, like right? Three, my first yeah. one. Oh, three. That was yours. Yeah. First what was one, your, yeah. what was your experience? Trey? How'd you, what'd you think? It's fucking awesome. Do you like it? I, yeah. I told people yeah. it's as, as awesome as the parts that I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. <laughs> we were having a blast. Honestly, yeah, we were no, having, you're having a blast. Yeah. Though, you yeah. guys look like you're having fun yeah. for sure. Oh yeah. We're having a Supposed to be. Yeah. And we got to meet Logan the night before too. Yeah. Shout out Logan. Shout out Logan. Yeah. The, Still waiting for you to come out here, Logan. So I can yeah, you. dude, he's dude, Logan's he's like good people too. He's on like some small stuff. He goes, I'm just too small to come. I'm like, bro, like, <laughs> tell him to come during. Yeah. The he day. got the new AirPod Pros, the big Beats AirPods, and he thinks Ooh. he's the shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's probably trying to connect them right now while he's listening. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I think so. What I didn't realize was um, the UFC hadn't been there in 13 years, and literally. That was the first time we had ever sponsored a fighter at the old company. Really UFC cool. UFC 96, Shane Carwin was the first MP sponsorship in Columbus. Uh, and then they haven't been there since. In my whole life. It's bizarre. Yeah. You know, there's a lot that's happened in 13 years because it's basically split down the middle between MP and Max. And that was, that was kind of, I didn't even realize that walking in, but I heard some people talking. I'm like, Fuck, that was the first time we sponsored anybody. Damn, <laughs> lots happened since then. <laughs> Pretty wild. The last time was the last time I was there for a fight was when Strike Force, before they got bought out by the UFC, it was the headliner um, for the Arnold, and we had the middle of the fucking thing, and it was the black background with MP on top Sick. of it, so it was massive. And that's when Ronda snapped uh, that chick's arm and talked shit to her. Oh, I'm almost man. positive. So it was a fucking. But what I loved from a competitive standpoint is every fucking supplement company was there. And they all had to walk in and stare at it. <laughs> and I was like, I walked down. I remember because I had like, I don't know, floor seats or some shit. I was walking down and I was like, yeah. Cut, cut through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, that was my two kind of memories. Of, yeah, yeah. But I think for me, it was like 
exciting to see all the people that it was their first time. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I think Tyler, Nick, obviously you two. And I know Danny had been to a few of them, but like just seeing everybody bringing their significant other, whoever their plus one was, I just thought it was really cool. What was Michaela's take? She like, she had, she had a blast. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. She said multiple times like, this is cool as fuck. Yeah. This is is tight. Work hard, play hard player. That's what it is. There's like no better way to experience it the first time. Yeah, especially like that. That yeah, was like yeah. the only person that had a bigger suite than us, Tony fucking Ramos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his, yeah. Shoe, his shoe was double decker. He had 50 motherfuckers oh, in his. Oh, shit. <laughs> we were on that 36 person party tower player. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was yeah. fucking awesome, though. Couldn't even fucking find it. My, uh, Our tickets were so cool, we couldn't find them. <laughs> Literally. True. Yeah. Literally, I couldn't find like, them. We could not, we didn't make not any find sense. Them. No. Nothing. It took us like 20 minutes. Same. <laughs> <laughs> we asked so somebody good. who worked at Nationwide. They didn't know where it was. <laughs> it's so fucking ga- That's fucking gangster. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Go ahead, Cole. So my recommendation <laughs> to the UFC. Right? Which, okay, recommendation so this is, this to the UFC. Shout out Dana White. So, yeah, so, so, Tra- so Trey's been to a WWE event, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We and it's like a spectacle, right? UFC's raw. Like the stage and it's cool and how they have the thing above the... Sure. You know, octagon or whatever. It's awesome. But if I was the UFC, right? First off, they need to reevaluate some of their guys' walkout theme songs. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Some yeah. of them are trash. Some of them are really good. Matt Brown, best one because it actually fits Matt Brown. He had an It literally Man, says, right? like, I'm. No, it's, I, he's, it's in the song says, I am the immortal. Oh, yeah. It was yeah, awesome, yeah, that's right? right? Yeah. And where they walk out from, whack. Yeah. Like, there's no, like. So you spectacle. think there needs to be bet more. They need to yes, take it more Yes, it would, it would set the tone more. Got it. Do you think that they're. Doing that on purpose because of the style of the sport. Cause, yeah, cause but some I, but, of the other some of the other organizations used to do. Yeah, it, but it, it doesn't even have to be anything. Like, imagine if they just put up like a fucking fence, like they're just walking through a fence. Oh, I got it. Yeah, like, yeah. and they and they just had a cool ass like walkout song. Mm-hmm. Like, MLB baseball players have better walkout songs. Yeah, so the kids in high school are so excited about that part. Like, yeah, it's awesome. Because AG was putting together for, like, when he's warming up his pitching, he couldn't find the clean version of Thuggish, Ruggish Bone by Bone Thugs. <laughs> 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 that's yeah. fucking amazing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, but yeah, the uh, so Owen goes up and he's playing Big Papa. Oh, yeah. And dude, the fucking dugout is fucking cracking up. <laughs> I love it when you call me Big Papa. Dude, it sets the tone. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. The walkout music. All I was thinking about legit. was the purple Cobras and Dodgeball coming out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. Love yeah. it. Um, thought, yeah. I'm thinking about this morning, uh, five weeks out. So when you guys listen, this will be called less than that. But powerlifting, bodybuilding, definitely getting out of bed more excited. Because this challenge, like one, I'm super thankful and have a ton of gratitude to be able to train again the way I want to. And this is only my fourth week squatting again, five times a week. So it feels Unbelievable. Most people think like you Dude, want you just squat? squatted seven hundred. Yeah, yeah, that was fucking real. I told too. You. on a camber bar. On a camber. So a lot on of a people, pause. For a yeah, three count pause. For a three, yeah. yes, and it was legit too. <laughs> In multiply with knee wraps, so it was just hard as shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a- Anthony, shout out Anthony Oliveira, my homie. He's not like, small. yo, yeah, he's definitely not small. He goes, <laughs> look, he goes, bro. He texts me because I sent him. I go, yo, I just fucking squatted seven hundred a camber bar. I'll send it to you soon. He's like, okay. So I sent it to him. He's like, let me tell you something. He always sends me voice messages. He does. He likes to do that. That's awesome. He's like, that's not a good squat just for you. Because there's a lot of just for yous that get thrown my way because I'm a fitness model, basically, right? Relative. Yeah, it's all relative. He goes, (laughs) that's good for anybody. Like, that's a fucking squat, bro. You handled it. You fucking, that bar throws people way out of position. Like, people don't realize how hard the camera bar is. I just made it look fucking like it didn't matter. Because one guy on fucking TikTok's like, that makes it easier. He just wanted to film it. Like, go <laughs> fuck yourself, bro. Yeah. All right. Get, go get Somebody fucked. And I was like, camera and I responded, before. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like your mom makes it, your mom makes it look easy. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> yeah. That is what he wrote. <laughs> Dude, I was going in on those comments. That's off the backboard Jeez. windmill, right? There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So fucking good, bro. So it, it, I'll tell you what. What I my favorite part about that was. One, I obviously had some emotion from just feeling Louie. I felt like I wanted to fucking do something crazy. And I knew my best ever on that bar 600. And that was like years ago. So I was like, fuck it. I got under 600 and it literally felt like a fucking easy. It was like a speed rep. And I was like, I don't know if there's anything else. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to go fucking seven. And the guys were like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) So to me, that was like. Whoa, and I needed that confidence because I know I'm going to try that in the meet. 
you know what I mean? I want I wanted to feel what it felt can like. Can you just talk about just the simple fact? Well, it's not simple, I guess, but of just unracking 700 pounds. Yeah. Talking about how difficult so that is. So I will tell you that I knew I was probably that strong last week because I unracked like 850 with the band. It was 830 to 850, and I handled it well. I missed the weight. But yeah, I handled it like super well. Real well. Even better than that bar because it was a regular bar because I can even lock it in better. So I knew – Whenever I and I knew I missed that on the technique, I didn't retake it because I kind of learned from Jake Emery getting banged up, taking something twice. But like I, I, I knew last week, hundred percent. I was like, I unracked that, and I was like, this is fucking eight something, and I just fucking handled it. Yeah. So I knew without a doubt I could handle seven hundred. What's well, literally trying to fucking break you? Yes, That's literally what it's doing. And when <laughs> you try to pause, when you try to pause it for three seconds, bro. That's a whole different animal. But I was locked up, man. I, I could feel it when I was in there. The, getting it there is the hard part. Well, once I locked up, I was like, I'm just going to stand up. I knew it as soon as I got in there. I Because it felt loaded the fuck up. Yeah. And I was like, these motherfuckers are going to love this. And I, said, I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. So, yeah. so I really think that as an almost 44-year-old athlete, that was my greatest gym lift uh, probably ever yeah. to date. Which is pretty fucking. Your wild. confidence has been one tick higher this for week. For sure, because sure. I feel like a bad motherfucker. <laughs> I feel like motherfuckers are starting to get a clue too. Yeah, like yeah. they forgot. You can't dispute seven hundred. Yeah, haters are ever. sick right now. Yeah, <laughs> the haters are sick. They really are. They're gonna hate you for that one. They're throwing up. Haters right now. gonna hate us for that Anthony. One. <laughs> Anthony texted me. He said you're gonna make a lot of people fucking hate you on this shit oh, you're yeah. doing right now, yeah. which is I I love that and even like. I was walking in um, Annan's baseball practice, and the coach was like, "Yo, seven hundo, huh?" <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. motherfuckers is yeah. I was like, I was like, oh yeah, yeah. Like, it's feeling good. <laughs> 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 so no, it's it's exciting, and I just I really want a chance, and I appreciate all the work you guys have been putting in, Trey, especially you capturing all this like right now, and Kyle about to be too. Like, to be able to really showcase my life's work like this. Um, and the belief and the crew and how everything's been right now, like, and for me to feel the way I do, that's why I'm just, why it's hot. We had to go after it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the way I look. And, and I think it can turn this whole thing up on an entirely different level. And so if I've learned anything from the past is, uh, when I feel good, have a lot of gratitude and fucking go get it and just fucking get it. And that's what, that's what I'm trying to do right now. Well, that's what I'm doing. I came back from that fucking boat trip last year. Remember with a fucking beard and just put my briefs on. Yeah, the pump bandit. Yeah, the pump bandit came back. I literally made... Changes. So, th <laughs> let me talk about this first. I made a mental decision. Yeah. I went and I think also lunging on the beach helped me because it clued me in on why my hips weren't turned off so bad. But I went there and I came back and I said, you know what? I'm done with the warm-up shit. I fucking never used to do that shit. I fucking doing all these warm-ups and I fucking keep feeling worse. Fuck it. I'm walking in the gym with this fucking beard, pump yeah. bandit style, and I'm just going to put my fucking briefs on and I'm going to go try to fucking squat a house again. And that's exactly what I did. And I came back and then fucking what? Three, two, three months later, I squatted 680 even though they turned it down, but I was fucking pretty fat. And then I was like, yeah, I'm about to get fucking ripped again and I'm going to go fucking squat something crazy. Yeah. And fuck it. And that's how I feel. Hey. Dude, that's, <laughs> the, the pump bandit was an amazing time. Yeah, I wish I would have had that's, balls enough to keep that's, that. That's your, like, that's, that's your alter ego. Yeah, yeah. I want to go back on the boat after I do this, bro. Bring I the little, handlebar back. Yeah, that shit is dope. That I saw a picture on my fucking, fucking yeah, 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 you, yeah, you should just bring that back every once in a while. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Then yeah. the haters are really going to Maybe you could sick. do a question mark next time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yo, yo, you should grow it out to where you can, like, twirl it. Yeah, oh, some Raleigh fingers type yeah. shit. Or get some, like, uh... The what are the the chops the or whatever? Brands. Yeah, the pork chops. Pork, yeah, I yeah, can fuck with that. Like cut it like right here yeah. and then leave the handlebar. Porn Haters trash. would be massively yeah. sick. Yeah, they'd have to go to the hospital <laughs> after seeing that. <laughs> I yeah. like it. So things things are definitely vibing in the right yeah. direction right it's now. It's exciting to watch. It, it does. It feels good, man. Yeah, I'm pumped about capturing it because it's just something like you know we'll always have. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, that that's the documentation of just social media in general. Like Ray, I mean, that picture of me, the fucking Evander, Triple H, and fucking Ric Flair. Flair. I forgot about that. She's like, I was on Twitter looking around, saw this. You might want it. That's cool. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. No you got doubt. a lot of those. I got a lot <laughs> of those rants. But here's what I'll tell you is there's so many things that happened back then because the momentum was so high and all of that shit is starting to creep back up again. 
And that's why I think pressing on the gas when shit is doing what you feel like you got to like just send it over the edge. It's the same shit as back in the day when the company was banging. I was like, I wanted to be on the cover of everything at the same time. Like you got to pour gas on shit when it's rocking mm -hmm. because it's so hard to create momentum and it's the easiest thing to lose. Mm -hmm. So when you see shit rocking, oh, you know what? We're going to do the fucking bodybuilding show May 7th and power up to meet May 8th. What are we doing May 1st? Dropping the fucking book. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, why not? I'm pour gas on that whole fucking week. Hopefully the fucking, we can sell some NFTs that week too or whatever, you know, like, I'm like fucking fuck whatever yeah. the fuck we're doing, like pour fucking gasoline on it mm -hmm. because once that shit's rocking, you gotta, you gotta just keep feeding it. And so it's, um, I don't know. It's, that's kind of what, that's kind of what's going on with me. Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, Dave Spitz, the guy who owns Cal strength, yeah. he has like a circle of like progress and stuff. Yep. So, cause like, you're always going to have like the inevitable like lows of course. the troughs and everything. So yeah, when you get to the top again, like yeah. when you hit that 700 probably. It's a fucking wrap, bro. Yeah, just fucking. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to read ride, a couple of my tweets ride. from yesterday. Hold on. This is real time. I okay. had some good ones. There were some fucking bangers. <laughs> They're not that far back. So, all right, ready? Tweet number one. I like that you guys are tweeting a lot more too. Danny doesn't really yeah. tweet that much. We're going hard on Twitter. You guys right are going hard on Twitter, which I like. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Tweet number one. Every time I lost, I just stood back up and I was different. That's okay. a motherfucking fact. Because when you get fucking punched in the mouth, you have to make a decision. Am I a fucking little weak ass bitch hoe? Or am I going to stand back up, learn from it, and fucking kill the haters? Okay. Where did where did hoe come from? When you add hoe, it makes it, it, makes it, it, makes it, it, makes it infinitely better. I yeah, no, no, but I knew that. That's why I added it. Because no one says hoe. Little bitch ass hoe. Yeah. I, when, you, when, you, when you say bitch ass hoe, that changes yeah. everything. Here. Uh, <laughs> bitch ass hoe. Here. I, 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 here. I'll, I'll, I'll read the next okay, one. Okay. 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 I'll, I'll read the next one and you elaborate. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Tweet number two. Yes. Winning speaks its own language. Ooh. Please elaborate, Mr. Gregory. So I'm going to say this one was underutilized on Twitter because then we got eight likes. <laughs> yeah. But that might be because people don't know the fucking language. That's true. I'm telling you, like, when Tom Ryan said something a long time ago to Dustin, he said, I can follow somebody around, or they should, somebody should be able to follow you around, and they'll be able to tell if you're successful or not. You won't have to tell them anything. And so what I was thinking about is, like, execution, consistency, in that um, the positive mindset, the glass half full, personal development, the uh, optimistic attitude, like the, like, speaking stuff into reality, like, um, that has its own language. Mm -hmm. It's its own dialogue. And people are uncomfortable when they don't understand it or they don't operate that way. Because when I say shit, I do it all the fucking time. Cole, when Cole talks about Disney buying out the NFT project, he's just trying to see people's reaction. Yo, I'm now trying to get it to where Disney, I said this at the UFC fight, I'm trying to get it to where Disney wants to buy us and we tell them no. Okay, oh, there yeah, you go. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like that one better. Yeah, that's yeah. Amazing. That was an amazing conversation. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. That, yeah. But that's my point, right? So you, you, you put things, so I do that shit just to fuck with people all the time. But the reality is, is that when you have an optimistic like Danny said, it goes highs and lows, right? But still, even when like you're like low is like medium to high for most people mm -hmm. and your high can be like a level of execution that could be like legendary, hopefully. It's like you're just fucking, you're just on a different kind of whole rhythm and just vibe. You're than, a like, different what, plane. It's a, it's a whole different like paradigm, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're just like shifting all of this stuff in your life. So it has its own language, but not everybody really understands it because – if you don't take the time to develop, to develop yourself, like the hours of all of us lunging and listening to stuff and all the reading and all the research to get better about all of these different topics, like that confidence compounds over time to where it's just like, that's like our norm. Mm -hmm. And on top of it, our environment feeds it. Is is very uncommon, so that's that's where that came from. It has its own language. I got a little snippet too yeah, to please. riff on uh, confidence real quick, if you if you want it. I think I actually sent it to you, but okay. Oh yeah, 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 the yeah, the one from uh, Ryan Holiday. Ryan had a yeah, please shout out. Yeah. Um. So this is from his like he has like a long form email like mm -hmm. article that he puts out like every week or two, and it was twenty nine things that he learned from starting a bookstore during yeah. the pandemic or whatever. And, uh, all right. So it's confidence is earned. People talk about trusting their gut, but that's something you have to earn. I talk about this and ego is the enemy. There's a difference between confidence and ego. Ego thinks whatever I want to do, of course, I'm going to be successful. 
Confidence is something you earn. It's something you earn over time. It's something you earn through having an idea and bringing it into reality. It's learning what you're capable of, learning what's possible, learning why you do deserve to trust yourself. Confidence is on the other side of having done a scary thing, a thing that a lot of people said that wasn't a good idea. Fucking, yeah. Fucking talk to me, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Shout out Ryan. Yeah. Or, or, yeah, Ryan Holiday. Have me on your show, player. How to win confidence in, or how to build confidence and win at life. May plug. 1st. Good plug. Shameless plug. All yep. right, next, next <laughs> one. Right, next one. All right, this is, uh, this is uh, some lunch talk right now. Yep. All right, quote, unquote. My 4 a.m. training and 800, meter, 800 meters of lunges are non-negotiable, so there's no evaluation to do them or not. It has zero emotion or choice attached to it. The emotion on big lifts comes from knowing what I've been doing every day. My shit is authentic. It's how I really feel, so why would I hide it? Yeah, so people, uh, I think, give themselves like a choice, meaning like they think it's a choice, whether they go to the gym or not. It's not a choice. It just happens. Like you're just doing it. So I think you have to shift your mind to that because I get that question all the time. How do you do that and that? I don't even, I don't, I don't get up and think, should I or shouldn't I? It, that doesn't even like... That doesn't even process to me. It's automatic. Yeah, exactly. Because it's non-negotiable and I've already put it on that side. Like that's already in that bucket. So when you already say like, this is just what I do. Now I understand once again, I'm crazy. This is my job, but everybody can learn from this because you're not, I'm not giving myself a choice to get out of it. I could barely walk in here a few days and I still fucking came. Mm -hmm. Like the, di the day I had to wear sandals on my fucking lunges because I couldn't tie my shoes and I still fucking did it. Like. I made a choice that this time I was going to hopefully earn the ability to do what you guys watched on Wednesday. Like, so I had to put it in that bucket where it's just not a choice anymore. And so if you want to actually make a change, whatever that is, it has to be that. Because if you give that wiggle room, the little bitch ass hoe in you eventually is going to take the fucking out route. Not Ever. you, but metaphorically yeah, yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like, so that right there, I need to let people know, like, I don't have an emotion attached to what I'm just supposed to do. Just what it's, it is. It's just what it is. And I think the faster you get to that, the, the, the better you'll be off because then that's the consistent part of the program or whatever your program is that you need to just go to. And then <clears throat> the emotions, look, I know that fucking social media likes it, but if it, there's also days I come out of those squats and I don't say nothing because it didn't feel that way. Like I, have created an environment for me to be a hundred percent myself because my name's on the fucking le not lease on the fucking building. You know what I mean? Like on the fuck, like no one can say shit. So if I want to fucking go crazy, do a backflip, fucking piss on the wall, I can fuck. Yeah. It's just the fucking truth. I'm not going to do that. I pay to see, I that, see the yeah. backflip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to see your dong. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to run, he's going to run over to the, yeah, the yeah. green mat over there. <laughs> but my point is, is that, <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> is it in the mirror, the right angle? Uh, so the point is, <laughs> yeah. the point is, is that it is <laughs> an environment where, I can be, and other guys I believe can be themselves because it's you know, it that is like you have to get yourself up for something crazy like that. There is going to be an outpour of emotion, and you know, and some people are like that, and some people aren't. But I've always been like that. I've always celebrated big things like that because, and the reason why I'm celebrating is because I know what I've sacrificed. I know how much gratitude I have, and I know what I'm willing to do to maybe get an opportunity to feel that way. And so, fuck yeah, you're going to hear it from me because that's that's why I'm putting all this fucking time in. Yeah. Why so, suppress it? Why suppress it? <laughs> Cole, is there one more? Yeah, there's one more. One yeah. more. All right. Quote, unquote. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> I'm in an active pursuit always of something. It just keeps me locked in. Yeah, so I started to think about like what I just mentioned, which was I'm getting out of bed a little bit even easier because I'm so excited about the challenge. And so even though I've done, we just did a meet that not, not that long ago and there's, you know, business challenges and fucking whatever me getting healthy was a challenge. But if I'm an active, I'm actively pursuing something that has dates and times I've done that my entire career that changes everything because my consistency has to be next level or I'm not going to fucking get the goal. 
even if the goal is a weight, even the goal is a date, even the goal is a look, even the goal is a number, whatever it is, like you, if you're not actively and by that active pursuit of trying to get that goal by default, I have to get better, develop myself, you know, put other people around me or the other guys around me have to get better so we can get better. Like if you're actively doing it, so I'm just not in a holding pattern. Just not in a holding pattern. I just don't live my life that way. There's no autopilot. It doesn't work that way. So even when <clears throat> I was coming back from being hurt, I was actively pursuing getting back to be healthy. Mm -hmm. Like, and it just took a while. So it's like, there's no fucking holding pattern. That's there's why you're going to see me push because I'm trying to see what's possible. Yeah. And that right there is part of the sauce. Yeah. The complacency is absent. <laughs> yeah. And like, look, there's going to be times when you're mini complacent. That's everybody. But I think if overarching, there's something that you're in pursuit of. Mm -hmm. um, it makes life way more interesting. I will, I'm telling you, I will fucking talk this shit forever. Because if you ain't got something on the calendar and you ain't got something you're pursuing you, that's forcing you to get better, life is fucking way more boring. <laughs> Just what it is. It is. You know what I mean? You know, whether I'm f good. That's why I don't mind failing weights. If I miss them, fucking next week. No big deal. Same with any of this stuff. Like if it doesn't work, fucking next thing. Mm -hmm. So I just, I'm not getting caught up in that. It's like the pursuit of it. You're going to, you're going to figure it out. And, uh, Steve Harvey, I, I was listening to a bunch of his stuff and he was like, yo, it's just like, you're, you're going to have to fail. You're going to have to mess up because that's why I talked about the first thing about every time I got fucking knocked down, I stood back up. I was different. I'm way different because of all this shit I've been through. That's why it's just getting me ready for what's next. Mm -hmm. You know? So anyway. I was on some tweet, some I was on that Twitter game, boy. Good. Yeah. All right. Anything else? No. Solid. This is a good episode. Yeah, some yeah. Heat. yeah. Fucking heat. I don't even know what the hell we're gonna call this episode. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. The it's fucking, fucking heater episode. Yeah. <laughs> fucking heat. Yeah. Fucking heater. Get that money. Yeah. We should call it that. We should call it that. <laughs> the heater episode. Get money. Yeah. Jeez. All right, Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. Small arms, Diddy at Trey Speed, and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. We are out.